Most media I ever had. Wow. Don't forget what I said. I don't want no new friends. I'm cool where I'm at. Seeing you, we didn't get a chance to hear your post fight speech. What was going through your mind right after that win? I mean, I, just, I did exactly what I wanted to do. You know, I was, the build up played out perfect. You know, I talked to my brother the other day and he told me, we need to go out there. I know you hurting, bro, because I'm hurting for you. You know, you got four, this be your 14th fight, and I'm sitting here watching the media and hearing what the people say, and it's kind of crazy because you beat the top guys and they still disrespect you. They give you no love and it hurts because you're my little brother. I know how hard you worked your whole life and stuff like this, and the disrespect. And he told me straight up, we need to go out there. He said, if you can get us to the ground, ground them pound. But if not, you need to get this dude an 815 ass whooping. Let him feel your hurt with them knuckles. I don't think nothing else. Um, me and my coaches, we knew we better, we the best in the light heavyweight division. You know, I start, people don't realize I started this with three fights. I came here from three fights, Ultimate Fighter won, and I'm here. Here we are, what, 17, 18 fights later, and I'm still standing. So the post fight was pretty much just telling him his levels to this man. I said it in a more of a higher tone and disrespectful way, but pretty much what I told him is levels. Build your way up. Quit trying to jump up. This is my place. I earned my spot, and I go back and earn yours. There's levels to this shit, and that was it. Uh, you kind of brushed off a lot of the criticism pre-fight, but uh, clearly a lot of emotions. How fulfilling was it to not only win the fight, but do it so emphatically and sort of shut up all the naysayers? It's one of the best feelings in the world. You know, like I said before, I've been from where I, the way I live my life, the way my life has been, it's been a lot of times I've earned different things and it just never was given to me, you know. Like I said, it's, it, we're in a world now where you don't get what you earn anymore. You get what you take. And I'm out there and took it from you. Well, you saw, obviously, Reyes put on a big finish over Chris Weidman. How would you compare your statement to his and make a case sort of for why you should be the next guy to be fighting John Jones? My case is he knocked out Chris Weidman. I just knocked out the hype train. You know, Chris Weidman had how many losses in his last fight. You know, Chris is my guy. I love him to death. You know, we trained together, helped him with the Luke Rocco. Nothing against him at all. He's a great mixed martial artist, and I respect the hell out of him. But it ain't like he went out there and knocked out a guy that was a hype trainer that was pushing to the title. You know, Dominic Reyes, he had a slow build like me. We were probably in the same place. You know, Chris Wyman was the champ, but the key word there was was. You know what I mean? And right now, Johnny Walker was the person they wanted to be the champ, that it factor. And I destroyed the it factor. So put him back at the back of the bus and move him to the front. He had been knocked out before, and you knew that. Did you go into that knowing that that might be there, and uh -huh. that was that what you were going for? Hundred percent. You know, I'm a mixed martial artist. I study. A lot of people don't. They see his last fight, and they, oh my God, he did this. Mm -hmm. And I fell into that trap before against Jimmy Manuel, and I knew I couldn't do that. You got to go back, do your research, find out people's weaknesses, and uh, I studied deeply. You know, when he came into the UFC from contender, I started following, looking up his stuff, realizing I knew right then. Oh my dude, got knocked out with a right hand early. And again, overhand right when he got knocked out twice in the fight. He got up and got knocked out again. And uh, actually, a buddy of mine, Carl and his wife Natalie, when I went to their house, the sub tree saying, she was like, just remember, he's been knocked out with the right hand. Your right hand will put him to sleep. This was like a month ago. And I told her, we already planned on it. We're going to set it up the right way. If we get the takedown, we're going to ground and pound. If not, we know the right hand will be there. So I went in there with my mixed martial arts skills and an open mind and focused on the chin. Was there anything that Johnny Walker did or said, you know, leading up to a fight that irritated you or made you feel disrespected? Everything. Yeah, his presence, him being here. And I'm dead serious. Y'all laughing. It's not, you don't see a smile on my face. You know, I've been here, like I said, I earned my stripes. And the fact he come in dead, doing the worm. And the fact, in the, the face off in the media, he still did the little fake trip coming up the stairs and could risk hurting himself and fuck up my money. I had to prove that was, that was a problem. Don't do that. We serious. This is business. It's levels. Be a professional. You know, I got to apologize. Like I said, I wasn't too professional with my post scream and all that. But you got to think, with all the tension I had, like my brother said, I'm hurting. You know, I sit at home with my wife and my kid, and we see the stuff come on the media, and you hear all the stuff about the title challenge, title this, title that, and you read it, and my name is nowhere to be found. And I'm the only one in the top ten in the division that knocked or beat top five guys multiple times. I fought 14 fights. Every fight but one has been a ranked opponent. And I'm the only person that wasn't in the fucking talk. It hurts. So I went out there and had to hurt him. Have you seen what John Jones has tweeted recently? Well, you asked. I'm going to let him ask. Sorry, you already went. Let me see what you said. Sorry. Sorry. I, was gonna, I, was gonna say, <laughs> I, I, need, I know you mentioned that you were a bit more fired up out there. Now you've sort of calmed down a little bit. Is there a part of you that sort of regrets the show burning to Johnny? Or based on what he said, do you sort of stand by it? 
I don't regret what I said, but I regret the way I did it. I should have been more professional. I've been here. You know, I told myself a bunch of times, no matter what happened, we're going to act like we've been there. And I apologize not just to Johnny, but to my family, to my fans, and to all my coaches that taught me better than that growing up. You don't do that. You be respectful. You shake a man's hand, and you act like you've been there. Be a, a good sport. And kind of on that same note, you're talking about his antics. Do you feel like he overlooked you in this fight at all? 100%. They all do. Glover yeah. did it. Glover told me after the fight, he said, I, I got to give it to you, man. I took the fight because I thought there was no way you could beat me. Mm-hmm. And that's the problem. They keep looking past me. Like I said, let them. People are like, oh, you mentioned Corey's name, this, this, and this. And I inbox them, like, shh, don't say my name. Let them sleep on me because a thief strikes most when you don't expect it. Now, what was you saying? So he said uh, so much for the early Christmas present. Um, yeah. What do you think about that? And, and what do you think? Uh, I know what he wanted. He, he thought he was going to hope he can get a fight in December. I'm pretty sure that's what he means, December 14th. But uh, you had your chance to fight me when I wanted to, so now you're going to wait. And, you know, uh, I made my statement. My name is going to be hot. It's like you strike when the iron's hot. I'm hot right now. You can't say I'm not. So uh, it's my terms, you know. I know you're the champ, but I got things I want to do, things I've got to handle, and I'll be ready. I'm still going to be training. Don't worry. But when the time comes and we negotiate this contract, whatever it is, We'll set a date, and we're going to dance. Because Dana White told TMZ that they're looking at this Reyes fight. Will you guys be going to Dana White after this and trying to get the conversation started right away, trying to get <clears> in there before they sort of book this Reyes thing? Because it looks like they're targeting it already. Well, I'll leave that to my managers. You know, if they want to give it to De- uh, Reyes and they want to go in December, that's fine. Well, I'll fight the winner when I'm ready. Corey, last month in an interview with The Athletic, you said that this is an opportunity to say fuck you to the UFC. I'm assuming you feel, feel pretty vindicated. You know, you, you derailed the hype train, as you said. What happens if they continue to overlook you and they give it to Reyes and then they look for another contender instead of yourself? Release me. If you don't want to give me what I've earned, let me go. My, I'm hot. My, 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 I, I prove my worth. I'll go somewhere where somebody's going to respect me. You know, that's the thing. A lot of people feel like you need the UFC. I don't want to speak out when it should happen with John Jones at 232. There's a reason why I spoke out. I don't need the UFC. I love being here. Don't get me wrong, I love this. I love my job. I love the opportunity to inspire and go around the world and do that. But I've never been a person to depend on somebody for my what I need. You know, if I gotta go back to working nine to five, I'll do it. I'm gonna make sure my family eat. But if I'm out here proving myself, I'm doing what you want. I just did exactly what you want knockouts and excitement. Tell me they're not excited. I did that. So they still not giving me my worth, let me go. I'll go somewhere else. It's about like your family. This is your first fight with your son being born. What does that mean to go back home to him with the victory? That's the best feeling in the world. I know he's watching. We got him in the hotel with Bay. He don't understand what he's watching, but the baby said he got the fight. I don't know it. And uh, one day he'll look back, and we can break it down to him. So you, you was there, son. You was in New York. You spent that couple of days in the fight week with me. You was my inspiration, you know. Today I was in there stretching and foam rolling with him on the floor, just watching him crawl around. Uh, I even took a little break from my time trying to put him to sleep and just, just keep him from fussing. You know, that's my man. That's my homie. I did it all for him. What does it mean that you and your, your good friend and teammate, Caitlin Chikagian, could potentially be fighting for titles next? What does that mean to you? I mean, that's what the plan was. When we talked, you know, she said no to Valentina the first time because she was getting married. And I feel like they did the same thing to her they did to me. I said no to fight Gus when I, my son was being born. And they kind of pushed her to the back. And I told her, I said, be careful what you say. Be careful when you answer that question because they will push you to the back of the bus. I'm dealing with it right now. Don't go through that. But it was her wedding, you know? You can't just argue with that. And I told her, she said, you know what? Let's go get these straps. I said, exactly. Let's go prove ourselves. We go out there, two dominated wins, and we both going to fight for the title. Let's get it. Bring it back to Jersey. Do you feel like this is a good lesson to tell your kid as well, that you know, when you want something, you go out and take it. You don't wait for it. You just, you know, this is kind of setting him up for, for success down the road as well. 100%. 150%. It's the same thing my father taught me growing up. And it take you getting older to realize. You know, he used to tell me, no, not like I say it all the time when I speak like this, not being racial or anything, but I grew up in an all white neighborhood. So it means that I got me and my brother, we got pulled over and stuff for no reason. So y'all said, well, you're going to do something, son. You got to make sure you do it 110% more than them. So they go 100%, you got to go 210 because you're not going to get what you deserve. As many times we beat the stars, this and this, but you're not going to get that because you're not in the community like them. Their parents are known. You got to go out there and take it. You know, and at times I figured you just go hard, go hard, blah, blah, blah. I did it. And at times I earned my spot, but a lot of times I was overlooked. But now as a grown man with a son, and my brother and my father talk to me, I understand what they said. You got to take it. Especially my brother said, I can feel your hurt. It's time to go take it. You got to go get that respect. You know, I'm sitting there in the tunnel, and guys from New York, I train in New York weekly. And you hear these New Yorkers saying, oh, fuck you, Corey. You're about to get knocked out by Johnny Walker. This is the Brazilian. I'm one of your own. And you disrespect me? I just started dancing to it. I had to go out there and take it and the shushing and the finger I threw up. I apologize for that too, but that was to them. All that you said, remember me. 
Like I said, I don't want no new friends. Don't go follow me now. Don't try to jump on my wagon. You had your chance. Stay where you at. Corey, you really managed to sort of channel this disrespect into great performances and ability to speak out. In some weird way, was this disrespect towards you a blessing in the sense that it's kind of giving you a chip on your shoulder? 100%. That's what I needed. It's what I needed. You know, the fact that they was overlooking and kept saying, there's no way Corey could. The same thing they said when I won the ultimate fighter. There's no way. Everybody now was like, no way. You can hear him through the walls. No way Corey can win this. He only got three fights. He only been fighting for six months. Guess what I did? I went out there and won it. 60 second knockouts in the finals. I need that. It put the dog in me. Like I said, the, dog, the UFC want a dog. They want excitement. They want something to talk about. Did I give it to them? Are you not entertained? I mean, we saw it, for example, a guy like Chell Sonnen for a long time was very respectful, but then when he started speaking out more, he kind of connected with fans on another level. I know you don't want to be disrespectful, but is this going to be the new Corey Anderson that we see the guys out there every single time? You show off your personality a little bit more, you sort of bring that excitement level to the fights as well? I'm going to try to fight just like I did today, dominant, but I never go to stoop to the level of Kell Sonnen where I'm talking trash on people before the fight, you know. With that being said, F. Kell Sonnen. You know, I heard what he said about me, his little thing. You know, but I've never, I mean, I respect him at the same time, but at the same time, what did you do, Kell? You got there, but you didn't do shit. You know what I mean? He's going to say something to me. Who gets up and stop what they're doing and go watch the TVC Corey Anderson fight? Well, Kell, I bet you they're watching now. I bet you saw it. Do you think that the build-up to your fight with John Jones will be a tense one? I mean, both of you guys sort of don't really like each other. Do you believe that fight week would be an interesting one for the fans to see? You would hope. I, I think it could be, you know, because it's generally a beef between me and him. You know, like I spoke out on him. Nobody else did that. And I know he's got some animosity to me. Like I said, I showed up at his event, his little autograph sign, threw him off, got him all cussing and throwing fingers in front of fans and cursing in front of kids and stuff. You know, it made him look bad in the public. I know he don't like me for that, and that's okay. I didn't go there to get anything started. I went there just to let you know this is my time and my presence is known. Just like this is my division. I'm here, John. Has he DM'd you at all? I know, I know that he DMs a lot of people personally on Twitter and through social media. Has he tried to reach out to you behind the scenes and say anything? Nope. He'll say something to my fans. Like he'll go on my post and he called me cornball once. I said something back. He didn't say something. And one of my fans said something to him. He attacked them. He attacks my fans. I always say it like, yo, direct that energy to me. Don't speak to my fans because they can't get their hands on you. I can't. Thank you guys.